Bernoulli's Principle. Questions to ponder. What is Bernoulli's Principle? How are fluid speed and pressure related? What causes lift? And how can airplanes fly? To understand Bernoulli's, Bernoulli's Principle, let's go back to volume rate of flow. If you remember with volume rate of flow, if, uh, this is a side view of a pipe here, and this is the fluid flowing within the pipe. If you'll remember when we had a large cross-sectional area in the pipe, the velocity was relatively slow compared to another area over here where the uh, surface area was, or the cross-sectional area was smaller, we're gonna have a higher velocity. If you remember the hose without the fitting on it, the uh, water float, uh, flowed relatively slow, but then when we put the con condensed nozzle on it, the, the uh, speed of the water increased dramatically. So with that idea of volume rate of flow, when we have a change in area going from a large cross-sectional area to a smaller cross-sectional area, we have the inverse reaction with speeds. In other words, the velocity in this constricted area must be much greater or must be greater than the velocity uh, with the larger cross-sectional area. So applying that volume rate of flow kind of concept with Bernoulli's equation here, with Bernoulli's equation in this particular example uh, set up this way, the uh, center of mass of this system is along this middle uh, axis of symmetry and therefore at all points here, the center of mass of the fluid stays at the same height. Therefore, these gauge pressures here at a particular height, uh, these two terms will drop out, uh, where H1 is going to be equal to uh, H2, which is equal to zero. So these terms will drop out. Uh, and when they drop out, Bernoulli's equation breaks down to this form. And looking at this form, it's helpful to understand Bernoulli's principle because what we see here is in this location, this velocity right here was uh, smaller than this velocity. So the only way that these equations, this equation will balance out, if this velocity is greater, then this pressure has to be less than this pressure. So the pressure in this local region with the fluid flowing here is less than the pressure in the pipe here. And there we have it. This is the concept known as Bernoulli's Principle. So to understand Bernoulli's Principle a little bit more, let's take a look at a couple of systems. Our first system to look at over here on the left is a system where we have some airflow. Uh, what we have in this system is we have a U-shaped tube right here filled with, uh, or filled with, partially filled with mercury. Now, if we didn't have any air flowing, if uh, the air wasn't flowing yet, we would have an equal amount of pressure at both sides here pressing down and this mercury level or this mercury would be level somewhere right around in here and uh, u-shaped when we have the air start to flow in this pipe what happens is the air pressure in this localized region with a smaller cross-sectional area and a higher velocity this air flow creates a lower pressure here than the pressure that is felt at this end of the tube. Therefore, this mercury tends to be drawn up and this mercury tends to be pushed down. And we get an offset of the mercury level here showing Bernoulli's principle that the pressure with the higher, flow, or faster flowing fluid, that's hard to say, uh, is lower than the pressure with the slower mo uh, flowing fluid. Wow, I need a linguist for this. So that's our first system with airflow, drawing the mercury up. Looking at this other uh, system with water flow or uh, liquid flow, this is a little bit different because these are evacuated tubes here. These are closed off and so there's no air in here and no atmospheric pressure here. So the pressures here are equalized and uh, 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 we, uh, these are not exposed to the atmosphere. And now we have a fluid flowing. When we have a fluid flowing and it's flowing at a low velocity and there's a higher pressure, it's going to press more of the fluid up inside of this tube. When it's flowing faster and we have a low, uh, lower pressure here, the fluid will be drawn back down. If the fluid stops flowing, the level of these, the fluid in the tubes would all equalize and be somewhere about 
in here. Uh, this would rise up about two thirds and these would drop down about a third each to equalize those. So those are two systems that show this difference in pressure because we have a difference in fluid speed. And that shows Bernoulli's principle. Let's take a look at some uh, uh, real life examples uh, that I created uh, with some video here and uh, check out Bernoulli's principle in action. I have a, just a piece of paper that I folded so that two sides hang down parallel to each other uh, under the influence of gravity. And I'm not gonna, I'm just holding on like this with my finger. And I have a straw too, and I'm going to blow uh, between these two pieces of paper. So the air is going to be moving quickly between them, but then the air is going to be still on the outside. So we should see a greater pressure on the outside and the moving air on the inside should create a, a lower pressure on the inside. So don't take my word for this. Get a piece of paper and a straw and try it yourself. You may not even need a straw. Now I have a uh, Diet Coke can empty and a regular Coke can empty and I'm going to put them pretty close to each other here because uh, there's a little bit of friction. They have a little bit of mass, a little bit of friction here holding them on this uh, countertop. But now I'm going to take my straw and I'm going to blow air between them. Uh, I might have to do this in slow motion after we're done here. But uh, what you're going to see is the air pressure when the air moves between here decreases. The air pressure on the outside stays uh, at a higher pressure and therefore these two, two cans should move toward each other when I blow the air here. We'll have to check that out in slow motion. Now I have a dime and I have a little dish here and I'm going to put this dime on the countertop and I'm going to move down toward the edge here and by blowing air up over this dime the air pressure above the dime should uh, decrease causing the dime to lift and then when, the, when it lifts it's going to catch a little bit of the air that, when I'm blowing and I should be able to get this dime in this little container. Let's see how we do. How many takes this is going to take? Not bad. Those were kind of fun examples. Let's go ahead and look at some real life examples here of Bernoulli's principle, including lift and other things. This one's a very practical one that you may have experienced already. This is a top-down view of a semi-truck cruising this way and a car cruising next to it this way. But this can also apply if, a, if you're moving in opposite lanes and the car is going this way and the truck is moving the opposite way. This example still works. And you may have felt this. And if you haven't felt this, pay a little attention to it when you're on the freeway or uh, road. And I think you'll see uh, this example in action. What happens in this particular case when both the car and the truck are moving this way is that air that uh, they're moving through here is forced between the car and the truck and kind of compressed in this region and uh, therefore the air has to travel faster uh, between the car and the truck uh, since more air is squeezed through uh, this smaller area than there is outside of the car and the truck. So the air speed is much faster between the car and the truck than it is outside the car and the truck. Therefore the pressure between the car and the truck is less than the outside pressure on the car and the truck. And this is a scary feel if you've ever felt it uh, where the car your, feels like your car is being drawn in toward the semi-truck because of Bernoulli's principle. If you've ever been sailing, or if you've ever, uh, this is a sailboat, a top-down view of a sailboat, if you've ever been sailing, or, or uh, have ever watched a sailboat, or have uh, seen anything uh, with sailboats, you might see that sailboats really uh, move kind of into the wind uh, at a slight angle. And you might be wondering, wow, how is that sailboat propelled by going into the wind? And uh, this is uh, Bernoulli's principle showing why. When a sailboat is coming in toward the wind at a slight glancing angle, the air is forced around the outside of the sail 
uh, at a much faster rate than the air on the back side of the sail. Again, since the speed of the fluid is faster on this side of the sail than on this side of the sail, there is a pressure gradient, a pressure difference in this particular direction, and that force uh, created by that is the force that pushes the sail. And there is a vector component of force forward, therefore, and that's what propels the sailboat. If you're like me, you've looked up a, at, a, at a big jetliner and just wondered in amazement, how can that uh, huge, massive object be cruising through and held up in the air? Well, this is the reason, Bernoulli's principle. And uh, Bernoulli, this is a this is a side view of a wing, and if you'll notice on airplanes in the future, that wings are shaped kind of in this teardrop shape, if you will, where the top of the wing is uh, more curved than the bottom of the wing, which tends to be flatter. That little curvature there, believe it or not, of the wing serves the purpose of forcing the air around the wing at a faster rate. The air molecules have to catch back up to where they were previously, and so in order to do that, the uh, air on top of the wing moves faster than the air underneath the wing. That creates our pressure gradient. Again, faster speed, lower pressure, slower speed, greater pressure, and that creates that upward force. And that upward force is what we call lift. And believe it or not, that is what keeps airplanes flying. They propel themselves forward, forcing the air over the wing, creating that pressure difference, and Bernoulli's principle uh, is present, creating lift. It's also true for helicopters, except they spin their blades, which are shaped like this. They spin their blades through the air. Another example here, you may not know any uh, much about car engines, but this is a carburetor. And the way a carburetor is what supplies the gas-air mixture to the engine uh, works, the engine over here, there's a piston that uh, draws down, and that piston that draws down sucks air in. How much air is sucked in depends on this uh, valve right here, and this valve is controlled by the gas pedal that you push on. As you push on the gas pedal, this valve opens up more, which allows more air in when the piston is drawn down, and when it allows more air in, that air moves faster through here, and creates a pressure difference, it's like a little fuel tank in the carburetor, uh, and it creates a pressure difference between that and the air that's moving fast here. And by Bernoulli's principle, that fast moving air creates a lower pressure right here at the intake of the fuel uh, than there is inside this fuel chamber. And that draws the fluid out and the air pushes it down. It goes into the piston and uh, the spark plug ignites it and, and uh, drives the piston down and creates the, uh, the energy or the force to move your car or motorcycle or what have you. Another example, if you've ever uh, sprayed some perfume in a bottle that looks like this, this is a cross section of that bottle. This is a little uh, air pump here, a uh, bulb that you press. And when you press that bulb, air moves past this opening right here and the pressure inside of this bottle is greater than the pressure that's created by the fast food uh, moving air here. Uh, perfume is drawn up through this opening by that lower pressure and also the air then pushes it outwards. It's called an atomizer and it's used for spraying perfume. And it's like that dime that I blew. Uh, the dime was drawn up first and then blown out. And uh, so that is another application of Bernoulli's principle. And if you start paying attention to it, you'll start seeing that Bernoulli's principle is in a lot of applications. And it's a, a great example of uh, physics in action that's applied. So hopefully you will know a little bit more about Bernoulli's principle and the difference in air pressure because the difference in air speed creating uh, useful forces for us. Uh, how are fluid speed and pressure related. What causes that crazy thing we call lift? And that kind of also gives you a little bit of an idea now of how those huge jets and so forth can fly. Scratch's parting idea. And I hope things are flowing well for you on your pursuit 
of continuous improvement.